Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Friday afternoon now, the second one for today. This is May 25th, 2018, and we now have subtropical storm Alberto. The subtropical label is basically an academic scientific label in terms of the structure. Don't worry about that for now. It eventually uh, is almost a certainty to become more tropical in nature, more compact, the wind field contracting, so forth and so on. For you that are along the Gulf Coast and parts of the interior southeast, eventually the label does not matter. The impacts are what do matter, and we were going uh, to get into that in just a moment. So let's look at the track map. This is from the advisory from this morning, and you can see this curve up here, eventually towards the central Gulf Coast, somewhere in the vicinity in terms of a landfall for the center of this, uh, Alberto, uh, maybe Alabama, Mississippi, Florida Panhandle, somewhere in that vicinity. We'll take a look at the model guidance uh, from the GFS operational and the Euro operational here in just a moment. So remember that the cone of uncertainty here is for where the center is forecast to be. This does not tell us where the effects or the impacts will be located. Right here gives you a little bit of an idea with the wind field but this is going to bring onshore flow and squally weather all the way over to the Florida Peninsula and then across the Panhandle and that, that will eventually spread inland and we may be looking at a substantial tornado threat for somewhere in this region as we get into next week. There's going to be a lot to talk about with this system. Alright, so looking at the key messages from the National Hurricane Center, very heavy rain. We've been talking about that from the get-go. But now there's the possibility of additional impacts, tropical storm conditions mentioned uh, for portions of the central and eastern Gulf Coast, and the dangerous surf conditions, Yucatan all the way up to the Gulf Coast. We may be looking at tropical storm watches and storm surge watches posted for a portion of the Gulf Coast later today, certainly by tomorrow, I would think, as this is going to bring the impacts of a tropical cyclone maybe approaching hurricane intensity. Yes, even though it's late May, that is possible. So let's look at the different parameters here. This is the rainfall, a larger version. This is going to change over time. Figuring out the bullseye of the heaviest rain is impossible. So basically it's going to be up to you to monitor rainfall on your radar. I use radar scope myself and local National Weather Service information a huge area of the southeast. Unfortunately for Memorial Day weekend, we're going to have to deal with this. So a lot of heavy rain, and if this is really slow moving, these rain totals could be uh, quite a bit underdone. We could be looking at, you don't see any of these purples yet on the map. I think they're going to start showing up, especially in here, over time. So that's something we're going to have to pay attention to very closely. And if you get saturated soil, as I mentioned in my morning update, and then even, you know, even 50, 60 mile per hour winds with an 80 mile per hour wind gust, you're going to start laying over some trees, and that's going to have a huge impact on people who are honestly wanting to come down here to the coast and enjoy Memorial Day weekend and kind of, you know, we, we get this because of the lives given by our servicemen and women over the decades, and now we have to deal with this on top of it. It's like, come on, but we have to be vigilant and stay on top of what's happening with this system and don't dismiss it as being not a big deal because for some people it is going to be a big deal not for everybody of course not but for some folks and it's that's the thing we don't know exactly who so i need everybody to pay attention especially since this is supposed to be a recreational weekend and of course the background is the time of remembrance for our service people lost uh, over you know the period of time that we've had them serve overseas okay so keep all of that in mind all right so here's a satellite presentation right now that comma shape to it so it's subtropical in nature it looks more like a kind of like a nor'easter that you would see up off the coast of New England or something but I believe that it's going to transition and kind of lose this comma shape and become more symmetrical not your perfect scenario obviously in terms of the structure and you would like like we would see in August for example I don't think it's going to achieve that 
but it could come close, and the different models are indicating that over time. So this is what it looks like now. Watch what happens over the next few days as this comes up through the Yucatan Channel and then eventually aiming for a landfall of the center somewhere along this region. But remember, all of this weather out ahead of it is going to impact people hundreds of miles from the center of circulation. We've had a lot of questions about how strong can this get? It's only May. Well, this map tells us what the temperatures are in the Gulf of Mexico. And here is your loop current, very evident. Let me get the color red out. And this is going to unfortunately just ride with the loop current. So it's going to have very deep, warm water to work with all through here. And then you have your very, very warm shelf water, uh, almost in the mid to upper 80s. But that's right along the surface. It's not very deep. but it is some available high octane energy, what we call upper ocean heat content. There is some there. You know, these surface temperatures, 28, 29 Celsius, uh, that's, that's getting on up there. That's pretty warm. And the, but the good thing is that's shelf water, so it'll be easily mixed. Uh, I just don't know if it's going to be enough to slow this down as it comes in right across there, uh, the center. This may approach hurricane intensity. It wouldn't surprise me. But you know what? Again, that's a label. We're just labeling these things. Hurricane, tropical storm. The difference between 70 and 75 miles per hour is negligible. And, you know, but it's the overall wind field we need to watch and the fact that it could approach hurricane intensity. There is a difference between a 40 mile per hour sheared tropical storm and a 75 mile per hour more developed hurricane. Certainly, that goes without saying. And even though I just said it, you get the idea. So. This could bring persistent onshore flow all across this region. And if it comes in on that curve like this, you know, you're going to drive that water right into the Mississippi Sound into southeast Louisiana. Storm surge is going to be an issue. There's not much of a tide range in the Gulf of Mexico, as you know. But the tide cycles that do exist, the water is just going to keep getting piled up each high tide cycle. So mariners, forget about it. You've got to stay home. Keep your craft in port. <laughs> Look, this is completely the worst time. When is it ever a good time, right? But the unofficial start to summer, and we have to deal with this. But you've got to be smart, or Alberto is going to claim lives, and we don't want that to happen. The upper ocean heat content, this is the actual measure of how much energy is in the ocean outside of the skin temperature. And you can see right through here, there's just a little bit. It's starting to show up in the bottom portion of the scale meaning that there is some upper ocean heat content for this to tap into, and there's even more of it. This is obviously going to grow as the summer progresses. We'll get up here into some of the upper parts of the scale. But Alberto is going to have quite a bit of energy to tap into, considering it's only late May. So that it could approach hurricane strength does not surprise me at this point in time. All right, let's look at the GFS. This is the very latest run off of the INSEP site, National Center for Environmental Prediction. This is the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere, 850 millibars. And here is the signature, kind of just one analogy. This is kind of like looking at it from a structural perspective. I look at it like an x-ray. That's not what it is, but if you want to see soft tissue or whatever, or bones in the structure of a person or an animal or whatever, you take an x-ray and it shows you the structure of what you're looking at. And I like to think of the 850 millibar vorticity chart as that. It tells me the health of the system via the symmetrical or lack thereof nature to what it looks like. So as we see the initial map, it's kind of oblong. You know, it's not, we've seen worse, so to speak, in terms of structure. But watch how this evolves over time. This is the next five days. Put this into motion, creeps along through the Yucatan Channel here starts to become more rounded in appearance there. That tells me, and then you get some of these appendages that come off where it's not completely handling everything properly. But in the end, look at that as it approaches the southern part of Louisiana, creeping up into the Mississippi Sound, southeast Louisiana area, very close to New Orleans and the uh, Louisiana-Mississippi border. That last couple of days or so is where it really starts to tighten up but you notice there was this little appendage, and I'm going to stop it when it happens again, that jumps out right there. See that? So that's out ahead of the system, and this is oblong, and then this kind of takes over 
and develops from there as I put it back into motion. See how that rotates around and then it becomes more of a circle? The whole signature is much rounder. Well, that shows intensification, certainly, but I don't know. If that happens earlier, this could be stronger, put it that way. That little weird feedback appendage that sticks out and true, I'm a geographer. I have a degree in geography. I am not a mathematical physics meteorologist where I know the physical processes behind the model. Few people actually do, believe it or not. There are some that do, but it's not me. So explaining exactly what it means, I cannot do. But I've done this long enough to know that when I see that little weird appendage that sticks out there, it shows me that there's something odd going on in the model. It's right right there. That it, so either it's still being in its formative stage or it's not. We'll just have to wait and see. It's, it's probably academic, but I thought I'd point it out. But right there, as we get to the Sunday time frame, Saturday night into Sunday, and it creeps up to the coast on into Monday, that's a lot of rainfall. This is you know, the center, the, the core of the system. You're going to have a lot of onshore flow and squally weather over here, tornado threat in the southeast. Big deal, folks. This is definitely a big deal. If you think that I'm you know, being hyperbolic about that, you probably should watch a different channel that has butterflies and sunshine all the time because if you just think, oh, it's only, you know, I'm only interested in Category 3 hurricanes or it's nothing, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong, and this is going to prove that. I do believe. Looking at the European, <clears throat> also from the 12Z run. Now this is from a different source, and this is every 24 hours. It's the way they disseminate their information. And the wonderful and talented Levi Cowan at Tropical Tidbits uh, makes this available for us to peruse, tropicaltidbits.com. So this is the initial map, and as we go through the next uh, five days, here is 24 hours out, and you can see the reflection of it. This is the surface. Uh, surface features, mean sea level pressure, and then these other colors are the shapes of the troughs and ridges in the atmosphere. Uh, items that would either steer it, block it, etc. All right, so that's 24 hours. There's 48, and you know it's kind of oblong in its overall shape, the envelope of the isobars. A little bit of structure could be gleaned from this. Then at 72 hours, it starts to tighten up, very similar to what the GFS shows. And at 96 hours, it's inland, but since these are 24-hour increments, it's hard to tell where it does so. Is it, is it extreme um, western Florida? Now, you notice that this is definitely east of where the GFS has it. Let's go back to blue here to make this stick out better. Uh, the GFS has this coming in over here, roughly, and it looks like the European might be... It just depends on where it turns. And since we're looking at 24 hours between here... And here, that's hard to say. Does it come in, you know, like this and then hook to the northeast? I don't know. You'd have to look at higher resolution versions of this, which, again, we can't talk about this for hours. I try to get through it and show you what we have and go from there. Notice, too, this sort of mountain that's developing over the top of Alberto once it's inland. So this is going to be a slow mover. This tells me slow movement. That's a ridge trying to build in. And it's thicker in the atmosphere over here. That's what this height area indicates, thicker heights in the atmosphere. And so this is going to be slow moving. And this is going to dump a lot of rain and the potential for severe weather. Uh, and it's going to stick around. That's day five, and it's still sitting over parts of northern Mississippi, southern Tennessee, if this is correct. And then something tries to develop off the coast of North Carolina, it looks like. Wow. So... I am going to be heading to Mississippi or Florida or somewhere. The general vicinity of where Alberto is forecast to go starting tomorrow morning. And I will be taking with me four of our camera systems that we that I uh, put out in the path of these things uh, and a weather station. And I will be streaming live on YouTube for the public. Uh, no commercials, what we call demonetized. It's just easier that way, honestly. I will not be monitoring the chat. Uh, it's just too much, and I certainly shouldn't do that while I'm driving. Duh. And when I get to the area, I'll be setting up the cameras. Now, the cameras will be available this year. We have to be able to survive, or at least I do, and I want there to be a we. 
uh, as a business. And this is what I do. I mean, like I said, I have a degree in geography. I don't work as an engineer somewhere or a doctor, and then I do this for fun. Or not fun, but you know what I'm saying. And so this year, the camera systems, we have to put them, uh, I hate to say a paywall, but I've got to be able to earn an income doing this. It's not sustainable if I give everything away for free. So the good folks at Patreon have come up with a way to support such endeavors. And, of course, we have our app. It's called Hurricane Impact. Now, the app is 4 bucks, Android and iOS, and everything will be pumped into the app. Or, and or, you can become a supporter at Patreon, and at different levels you get different access. From time to time, I'll certainly post clips and frame grabs, etc. But the cameras themselves, I can no longer just put out for everybody to view for free because that's not doing it. And I'm literally going to go out of business, and I'm not going to be able to do this in the future if I keep doing it that way. That's just the way it goes. It's not me trying to be greedy. It's trying to stay in business so that I can serve and help. All right? So consider that. And uh, don't be angry about it, because you know, unless somebody writes me a check for a million dollars to get me through the next decade where I can hire a staff, I have to do it this way. And at least there's no ads. There's no commercials anymore. Yay! That's the huge upshot. You can just forget about all that. That's the good part. All right, I'll talk more about the mission probably later tonight or in a video blog tomorrow, and then I'm going to hit the road. And like I said, I'll stream live on YouTube. That'll be up and down. You know, I use the YouTube app, and sometimes it comes in and comes out. Who knows? But I'll do the best I can. I'll post videos from the field, and um, we'll see what happens. All right? Have a good rest of your afternoon. Sorry to be the bearer of such bad news over such an important weekend uh, for the United States, like I said, as we remember those who gave their lives, but also because it's the unofficial start of summer, and this is a bummer uh, to have to deal with. I realize that. I empathize. I get it. Okay? And I'm going to be missing time with my family. They're all here in Wilmington, and I'm leaving. So I'm part of it. That being said, try to have a great rest of your Friday afternoon. I'm going to be getting ready. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again probably early tomorrow morning.